الحمد لله الحمد لله على نعمة الإيمان به وأشرف الإسلام له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له القائم على كل نفس بما كسبت المجازي لها بما عملت أشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الداعين إلى الله على بصيرة والمجاهدين فيه بإحسان اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تدعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Dear respected brothers and sisters, as an act of worship, fasting is just like a human being in the sense that it's got a body and a spirit. And we need to think of all acts of worship in this sense, in this particular way, that there are two main components for, for each and every act of worship, just like us, just like ourselves. We as human beings, are composed of two main components, two main elements, the body and the spirit, or the body and the soul. The same applies to all acts of worship, including fasting. So, sometimes we become very much focused on and very much interested in the body side of the act of worship, or the physical structure of it. That's why all of us, Almost all of us know very well the things that invalidate the fast. The physical things. If you eat, if you drink, if you do your sexual, any sexual relationship during the daytime of Ramadan. So this is going to invalidate your fast. But still all these things are related to the physical structure of the act of worship. How about the spirit of it? Concerning, and, and unfortunately, this much focus on the body of the act of worship, or the structure of it, sometimes is done at the expense of, the, of its spirit, of its essence. And that's something equally important, I should say maybe more important than the physical structure of fasting. Because if the physical structure of fasting is invalidated, Unwillingly, for example, you eat or drink out of forgetfulness, you just forget. And when you drink, your fasting will be still valid. So, the problem is that we do not give enough attention to the spiritual side, the spiritual act, the aspect of the act of worship. So, when it comes to fasting, First thing simply is to abstain from eating, drinking, and sexual desire from dawn to sunset. Brilliant. That's the structure of fasting, the physical aspect of it. The spiritual act of, of fun, the spiritual aspect of fasting, which is equally important and maybe more important than the physical aspect of it, is that we need to purify our hearts for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ما يريد الله ليجعل عليكم من حرج ولكن يريد ليطهرك. By these acts of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to overburden us or to require us to do something beyond our capacity or to keep us thirst, thirsty and hungry all the day long. That's not the reason behind it. But the, the main reason behind it is to purify ourselves. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it clear at the beginning of the ayah talking about fasting. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبْ عَلَيْكُمْ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبْ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Fasting, or you believe fasting has been ordained for you as a compulsory act to worship, that just as it was ordained upon the people before you so that you may achieve piety, God-fearing, righteousness. So this, the idea of taqwa, the idea of purifying the essence, the essence of man is the main objective, is the major objective behind fasting. And that should be the focal point for every one of us during fasting. Now we're nearly in the middle of Ramadan, so we need to review 
what we've been doing during the first half of Ramadan. Have we been doing the right thing? Have we been well oriented towards achieving this major objective of piety, taqwa, righteousness, or not? We need to check our intention all the time. Did I manage to be kind, calm, to control my temper, to control myself uh, during the, uh, the, the couple of weeks that passed from the month of Ramadan or not? These are the major questions that we need to ask before the end of Ramadan. Because as we agreed at the beginning of Ramadan, we need to make the most of it. We need to uh, to take a step forward towards betterment, towards getting better in terms of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in terms of our relationship with others as well. So, back to the idea of the spirit of the act of worship. This is not only specific, I mean specific, it's not only limited to fasting. All acts of worship have got, as I said in the beginning, a structure, a body, and a spirit. The prayer has got certain movements that you do, going up and down, standing, bowing, prostrating, sitting, and so on and so forth. But the spirit of it is khushua, and that your heart should be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of you. You feel that you are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your prayer. So it's not only about moving up and down, but rather it's the, the essence, the spirit of that act of worship which keeps your heart connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same applies to a dhikr, for example. When you do dhikr, dhikr is, yes, a few words that you repeat. Uh, for example, if you're making dua as well, you raise your hand. There is a structure of doing things, but the spirit of it is highly important. When you do dua, when you supplicate, you invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get the feeling that you are in need of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you really need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you're raising your hands up to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Him for guidance, for success, for whatever you're asking for. You feel that sort of need. And dhikr, you feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. Even when it comes to hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَيْ مَعَظْمٍ شَعَائِلَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Again, it's all about the heart, about the spirit of the human being. So, al-hajj is meant for every one of us to glorify the rituals, the rites of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's part and parcel of the taqwa of achieving the righteousness and piety and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Back to fasting because that's our main focus today. Fasting, how can I enhance the spirit of fasting to be more practical? Actually the Prophet put it clear for everyone of us and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam please. He says, مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةُ فِي أَنْ يَدَعْ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَامَهُ Whoever doesn't manage to abstain or to stay away from foul words, from telling lies, from the bad things, especially verbal, things that, that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever doesn't manage to, to stay away from these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of the first and hunger. Because as I said, as you just said at the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want us to remain hungry or thirsty or, or to torture us. There's nothing of that at all. It's all about allowing more space for the soul to extend. Because when you stop feeding the body, this allows an opportunity for the soul to be elevated. When you eat a lot, you, you become inclined to sleep, you become drowsy, you, you, you have sort of uh, inclination to laziness, to slacking down. So when your body is light, you don't feed it, you don't, you don't feed your body much. This allows the soul to elevate and to nourish. 
So we need to think of it that way. We need to focus, especially in the month of Ramadan, on our spiritual attitude. To see whether we are improving or not. Am I still the same in terms of my relationship with brothers and sisters around? Or is there any sort of betterment, any sort of improvement? Am I still the same in terms of my relationship with the mosque? Or am I going to be a regular visitor of the mosque, inshallah, even after Ramadan? So these sort of improvements are the signs of the acceptability of the month of Ramadan. Are the signs of the spiritual improvement. <coughs> so it's not, it's not all about the body. That's why some Muslims struggle when they are, when they are asked why they fast. Some, non especially non-Muslims, ask us sometimes, why do you fast? And uh, quite a few brothers, may, maybe so many of us, struggle with the answer. Though it's, it's as simple as Allah subhanahu wa mentioned, but sometimes we say, to feed the poor and the needy, because they, they are in they, they are hungry uh, most of the time, so we need to, to feel sympathy with them. So how about the poor and the needy? Why do they fast? Because they are still required to fast. Actually, these sort of results are consequences of fasting. This, that, that's part of the outcome of fasting. Fasting results in this um, good consequence or good result. But the major objective behind it is the spiritual elevation of man. We need to be elevated during the month of Ramadan. We need to work on our souls rather than our bodies. We, we give our soul, our bodies rest. We allow the body sometime to rest and allow the soul an opportunity to elevate, to be uh, highly attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the main purpose behind it. And that's the main reason why the Prophet ﷺ used to teach the companions that you're not allowed during the fasting day even to fire back any sort of verbal abuse or, or even somebody who wants to fight you. The Prophet ﷺ said, <laughs> فَإِنْ كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَصْفَ فَلَا يَجْهَلْ وَلَا يَسْخَرْ فَإِنْ سَابَهُ أَحَدٌ أَوْ قَاتَلَهُ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمٌ This is not related to eating or drinking, it's about the behavior. Our behavior has to change. We need to be well behaved during the month of Ramadan and take this as an opportunity to reach hard our battery of Iman in order for us to remain well behaved for the whole year, inshallah, for, the, for all, all the time. Even if someone offends you, even if someone wants to fight you, you just stay away from them in the side, in the side. I'm fasting, I can't fight back. I can't be exactly the same as your behavior. I am, I am now of sort of elevated behavior. I am more attached to heavens rather than the earth. So the earthly part of ourselves, which is the body, is relegated to a secondary position and the primary position is given to the soul. Priority is given to the spirit during the month of Ramadan and that should be our main focus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us success in this world and hereafter. Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting and our qiyam. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qalbihim wa sallallahu اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وبعد. Please come forward, brothers. Please come forward and allow space in the back for us.
part of uh, our endeavor to, to achieve spiritual elevation of Ramadan is to try to suppress one of the main qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like to suppress the feeling of miserliness because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whoever is saved whoever is protected from the miserly from the miserliness from the stinginess of their of, of, of their attitude of their behavior of, their, of, their, of themselves then these are the people who are going to achieve success miserliness is one of the of the negative attitudes negative qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like and we need to learn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al kareem the generous subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best way of approaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we know that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the best example for us from among the human beings ever and we need to follow him and we need to take him as the best example but what's even better is to learn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself to try to, to imitate Allah you know that Allah is Kareem so you become generous to others you become helpful to others you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Afu is pardoning is forbearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving then you try to act upon that you try to learn from the attitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself that's the best way of achieving uh, Allah's subhanahu wa ta'ala pleasure because Allah likes the people who learn from him directly subhanahu wa ta'ala so we need to resist that feeling of miserliness إن الله لا يحب كل مختار فخور الذين يبخلون ويأمرون الناس بالبخل. الله does not like these people who are miserly and who who even ask others to be miserly. so الشح والبخل. we 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 all love money. I know that. that's part of our nature. we we like our money. we 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 work hard to get money. But Allah's pleasure and Allah's paradise is not cheap. You need, to, you need to pay much for that, for Allah's pleasure. And when, when, I, when I or anybody else asks you to, to give out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not for myself or for that person asking you. It's for, first of all, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and second, for the, the common good of the whole community. It's not a personal. Um, interest at all. It's all about first achieving spiritual betterment, which is part of the major objective of fasting, and second to work towards the common good of the community. We all now, mashallah, uh, getting together, which is a great opportunity for us to work together to see how great effort we can achieve, how great effort we can make together. We have got a common or a, um, a collective duty to fulfill, which is uh, the hall that we hire for praying tarawih. It's for every one of us, obviously. So we need to contribute towards that rent, towards the rent of that hall. And as we mentioned before, it's 350 a night, 350 pounds per night. A sum, a great money or a big money for for us as individuals. But as I mentioned before again, when we get together collectively, we can do much more. So how many people now in the hall? Maybe more than 500? Plus we've got people at the back as well, and our sisters at the back. So, mashallah, plenty of people. Together we can, I mean, in our totality, we can do much more, we can imagine. So, we've got a few collective duties to fulfill, to fulfill inshallah during the month of Ramadan. First is the whole rent, which uh, we've been struggling with during the last few days because the donations are yeah, going down a little bit. So uh, we are addressing your generosity, your kindness, to work towards that and to suppress the feeling of miserliness. To show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are learning from you, our Lord. You are generous and will try to be as generous 
as possible. You will give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٍ I don't know. Nobody else knows. It's, for, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will know how much you pay, how much you can afford. Because even those who put little, they can give little, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be even, more, uh, even happier with that little amount. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's focus is not on the way you look like, but it's the way you act, the way you behave, the way you think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah la yamfuru ila suwarikum wa la ila ihsanikum wa la ila yamfuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. Allah knows that I'm, I can't afford so much money, but I give as much as I can. So, this would be highly appreciated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> the other duty is that, inshallah, during the uh, last 10 days of Ramadan, we will be doing uh, tahajjud and this will necessitate that we'll have suhoor in the hall inshallah and suhoor will cost uh, for, for every day will cost uh, uh, 150 pounds every day i've got all the details here to be more accurate yes 150 pounds per uh, per day every suhoor inshallah so this again, this this again requires our generosity to contribute towards that, inshallah. So at Tahajjud, will be the, during the last 10 days, uh, I mean 10 nights of Ramadan, we'll start uh, maybe uh, 15 minutes or so after Salat al Tarawih, inshallah, we'll come back for, uh, I mean come back to the hall for Tahajjud, and then this will be followed by the Suhoor, inshallah, and then Salat al Fajr. So, We've got tahajjud, we've got suhoor, and we've got the whole rent, inshallah. And this, this, this needs our generous contributions. Uh, it, it, it's all voluntary. <coughs> Nobody can force anyone to, uh, I mean, to contribute to that. It's voluntary. It's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's for helping the community to get together. And it's part of the spiritual elevation. Now we need to resist our uh, our negative feelings. Okay, if I get if I give out, then I'll get poor. Allah, there is a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you back even more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُ وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الرَّزِقِينَ Whatever you give out, whatever you spend out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give it back to you. We'll be, we'll be giving you even more than you've given out. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our contributions and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us be more elevated, more spiritually elevated during the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting and our prayers and our recitation of the ever glorious Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us act upon the requirements of the ever glorious Quran. Allahumma anfa'na bil Quran. Allahumma anfa'na bil Quran al-Azim. Allahumma anfa'na bima sadafta fihi min al-ayat. وادفع عنا به الكربات وهون به علينا السكرات عند الممات اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا واصلح احوالنا واحسن خلاصنا وبلغنا مما يرضيك امالنا يا رب العالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك انا كنا من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك انا كنا من الظالمين اللهم كما بلغتنا رمضان فبارك لنا فيه اللهم كما بلغتنا رمضان فبارك لنا فيه وعنا على على اتمام صيامه وقيامه وجعلنا فيه من عتقائك من النار ومن المقبولين يا ارحم الراحمين الهنا وسيدنا ومولانا الهنا وسيدنا ومولانا اللهم انا اجتمعنا في هذا المكان المبارك على طاعتك اللهم انا قد اللهم انا قد اجتمعنا على طاعتك فلا تفرقنا يا رب الا وقد غفرت ذنوبنا اللهم لا تفرقنا من هذا المكان الا وقد غفرت ذنوبنا اللهم لا تفرقنا من هذا المكان الا وقد اعطيتنا رضوانك اللهم امنحنا رضوانك اللهم ارزقنا تقواك وانقلنا من دائرة سخطك إلى دائرة رضاك اللهم عليك توكلنا وإليك أدبنا وإليك المصير لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إلا كنا من الظالمين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Just one last announcement before I get down uh, Last Friday's collection 
uh, was uh, 1,650. So thank you very much for your generosity. Please keep going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. It's, it's, it was uh, 1,650. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.